Because, and I didn't get that on video. You're right, but you're the man with the most five gallon buckets. <laughs> <laughs> the best acceptor of awards. No. I've gotten this award for the last nine years. Bobby, thank you. I'm getting one today, and I'm going to get it for the next ten years. Hmm. Is it your birthday? Thank you. Close. Close. Has something to do with that. With what? Social Security. <laughs> Close, close, <laughs> close kind of. We're going to have to figure out how to give another pill away. Oh, wait, where do we close? go? The oldest contributing member. There you go. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. the oldest guy that's been around. <laughs> <laughs> and will be, so you figure it out. Okay, so you get a pail. Uh, number two, what's the most important thing? during your conversation with your customer, whether you're estimating the job or just going over there to a uh, lady call a job that she wants to know how much it's going to cost. What's the most important part of that conversation? Professional. Getting your address. Nope. Your name. 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 Let's yeah. file it. The message is being received. Nope. Professional. Email nope. address. Hi. Your nope. introduction. Hi. Her hand. Answering what? the phone. Answering the phone. I can't hear you. What? Nope. It's all about Customer's not always right. Thank you. 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 We use that. Rob, <laughs> really? Boom, 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 bam. Courtesy. They're, they're all good answers. These are all great, yeah. This thing? What, what I, what I, when I, in our industry, there's a very important word that we have to be on the same <clears throat> level with the customer. When I walk out of there, they know exactly what they're going to get. And I know I can exactly give them that, plus a little more. Experience. Oh, oh, I heard the word. Expectation. There we go. And that also has to do with the pressure washing industry. Setting the correct I, expectations. I thought I was, I mean, I'm going back 14 years ago. Uh, I wasn't a pressure washer guy, but I thought I cleaned things pretty damn good. So as the years go by, I, I'm, as, uh, you know, because of getting these awards for being the oldest, my, uh, I'm not dragging that shit out anymore. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, a fellow Pete Cuesta, who we trained about 10 years ago, uh, I say, Pete, can you do my lanai? And he comes over. I'm watching this guy with 88 gallons of chlorine, and he's there like six hours doing my lanai. He's a little redundant. And I said to myself, was I that good? Did I not give my customers that kind of a job? And I was so impressed with him, and it kind of set me in my place that I could do better. But the nice thing about it was, when I think of these organizations, it's like you coming here seeing another guy do something better. So I'm glad that experience happened. So it made me a better guy. And that's what all this stuff's about. Expectation, expectations, wow factors, that stuff. So, we got two pals of sealer. Who wants a cigar? <laughs> you got it. That's it. You don't have to guess anything. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Okay, can you guys hear me in the back, or do I actually need this? So stop, like? stop over okay. and grab a tail, whatever one you want. As Mr. Clay takes out the phone. <clears throat> okay, guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, today I'm going to be talking about data mining with you. And um, a lot of people don't know what data mining is, but it's actually a very important part of your business, and you guys are probably already doing it. 
But this is just kind of a way to, especially in the winter time, if there's any northern people, this is a great thing for you guys to do when you guys can't be out washing and stuff like that. Um, some of the things that we're going to be discussing today is what exactly is data mining? How do I start it? Who can mine data? Um, where you can mine data from? What information you should be looking for? Um, what do you do with the data that you found? And then why is it important to you? Okay, data mining is basically exactly what it sounds like. You're taking raw information and you're making it useful. How do you start? First, you're gonna to wanna to figure out what type of customers you guys wanna data mine from. Because each one of these, you know, it can get very confusing. And if you're trying to do way too many different like fields or aspects, you can get it confused, you lost, and then you get fed up, and then you just stop doing it. So just for organizational purposes, you wanna make sure that you kind of just go with like one company or one aspect of the business. You know, like I put like commercial retail or property management, I'm going to go after shopping centers. So I'm going to go find all the shopping centers in my area. I'm going to get all of the property managers information. I'm going to set it up and we're going to, you know, market to them. You know, construction, government, dining, and dining can be anything from going after fast foods, family restaurants, high end, um, strip mall restaurants, because they have the back doors, dining pads, or if you're going for freestanding, you know, it all, you know, all of those different things is, um, important to kind of keep them separate and stuff like that, especially um, when you take this, what I'm giving you, and how many people have been to my other class, my unsolicited class? Okay, so a few guys. So this is pretty much all the precursor stuff that you would want to do before you actually started doing the unsolicited. So kind of, these two kind of work together with each other. Okay, so who can mine data? Data. Basically anybody, if you got, you know, your teenage kid home on the weekend, he wants 50 bucks to go, you know, with his friends or whatever, I will sit down for a few hours at the computer and have him start mining some data for you. I make mine do it, she hates it, but no, nah, she likes going out with her friends. <laughs> Child labor is also great, that's why we have kids, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have a secretary or like technicians, like I said, especially for your winter time guys, if you're just sitting at home and Instead of getting in fights on Facebook, you guys could actually be doing yeah. something constructive. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also going to build your business and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, all it really takes is a little bit of time. With Today with technology and stuff like that, you're not having to run all over the place. Um, you know, after a few hours, you can have 50 different contacts already set up. So it's, it's just, like I said, it's kind of a new, neat little tool. And where can you mine data from? Pretty much anywhere. As you can see, I, I kind of broke it down into three different sections here. I mean, you can find stuff on Google, Facebook, um, the company websites, like if you're going for property management companies. A lot of times nowadays, like before, where it was impossible to figure out what who managed what and all that kind of stuff. A lot of these days now, like if you go to CBRE, you know, it'll list all those property managers in that area, and then if you click on that property manager, it'll give you like all of the properties that they actually manage, along with all of their like information, um, you know, their email addresses, their direct line telephone numbers, addresses. You can find. It's just a, it's a nationwide property management company. I think it's an offshoot of Grub and Ellis, if you've ever heard of them. So, but yeah, it's just like I said, it's just a property management company. <clears throat> but yeah, you can actually go to these websites. Same with construction companies. You know, if you guys want to go after new construction, a lot of times if you actually look onto that company's website, you'll find out who their project managers are and with all of their contact information and all that fun stuff. They'll probably even have a link for you to get onto a vendor list as well, which is really cool because back in the day, just even try to find a vendor list or who you needed to send the information to, it, it was almost impossible. But now, like I said, with the technology and stuff like that, it's actually very easy to be able to locate that information and go from there. Um, in person, dining out, shopping, walking by, driving by. I mean, how many times do you walk, drive by a shopping center and it says property managed by dee, 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 dee. Well, then there you go. You find the company, you go to the company's website, you find the information, you send the unsolicited bid. Or you can contact them to see, you know, about setting up a meeting and coming and doing a whole presentation and all that fun stuff. You had a question? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, but another, um, to get back to the internet side, like third party websites, um, that is Better Business Bureau, if you're going after mom and pop shops, a lot of those are registered there and it gives you all of their information. I mean, if you know the restaurant, you already know the address and stuff like that, but you might not know who the proprietor is or the owner. If you uh, check their BBB listing, it'll actually tell you the owner and a lot of times give you their email address. Um, government websites, if you know, going to your Metro website, state websites, things like that, it'll actually give you a list of, you know, things that they want to get done, and they'll give you a link to get on the vendor list for those as well. Um, but yeah, how many people, like, eat out, like, once a week? I figured a lot of y'all were going to be filming it. How many of you actually, before you leave that place, ask for a business card? Oh, we got a couple of them. There we go. Guess what? You just, you just data mined them. Give you the address, email, name, pretty much everything. Um, but referrals too. Previous customers, current customers, future customers, ones that you have on the books that you haven't been able to get out there and actually complete the work, ask them, hey, do you know anybody else that you know could use our services? Guess what? You just data mine them. Family, friends, I mean anybody that you come in contact with, you know, ask them, hey, you know anybody who could use our services? more data you get, the more possibilities of customers. And this is typically the stuff that I look for um, when I do, do the data mining thing. I have some examples I'll show you. Um, but I try to get the contact name, the company name, the address, the telephone numbers, not just the office number. If I can get their cell phone number, I'm going to try to get that as well. Um, any email addresses they have, their website, and Facebook. I'll even get their Facebook, try to find their, fa their business on Facebook, because if I can't find their email address or their company address, I can still contact them through their business page on their Facebook. So either way, I'm going to be able to contact them one of three ways. <clears throat> and what do I do with the data? I always started off in Excel, which I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit. Just because with an Excel sheet, I can manipulate it. You know, I can remove columns, add columns, I can pull columns from that original data sheet, put it into another one, say if I just wanted the email addresses. So let's say I'm gonna upload it into MailChimp. I'll take the first name, last name, email address columns, and I'll put those into a separate Excel. And I'll take that Excel and I'll load it up in there, and it takes 45 seconds, and I have 200 some odd email addresses already in there, I'm good to go. I can start doing that marketing campaign. Um, again, with using the Excel sheets first, all of these different ones have ways that you can actually just upload that into your customer databases. And these are just some of them that I pulled off the top of my head. And then, you know, you, or if you don't want to use any of those CRMs, you can actually just start doing the bids right off there because you have the information. You know, copy it, paste it into your bid, send the bid. Email it, mail it, do whatever you're going to do with it. Why is data mining important? For one, it gives you potential customers. It's probably his thing. You're going to find stuff that you never even knew was there until you actually start looking for it. And you're like, wow, I didn't even know that business was there. And you're like, I could have been cleaning that for five years now, you know? Um, it's going to help build your marketing databases. It's going to give you that whole baseline of when you need to send out postcards or door hangers or flyers or emails or whatever you're doing to market. This is a good base to start from. Um, company recognition. When you start doing that marketing and stuff like that, setting those pamphlets, stopping in, giving them notepads or koozies or mouse pads or whatever, the more you start visiting these places, um, you know, the more they're going to know your company and the more they see your face, they're going to like, hey, hey he's, not a, he's not a bad guy. He comes in on, you know, when he says he's going to. He's reliable that way, so why don't we give him a shot? So again, this is just all going to help you guys build your brand and your companies as well. And most importantly, it will make you money. Who doesn't want money, right? Yeah. So yeah, um, like I said, this is all just kind of precursor. Um, once you start mining the data, it gets a little bit daunting. It might be a little like scary at first, but I promise after you do like 20 of them, you're gonna be like, Psh, this is easy, this is cake work. Um, but I'm gonna give you guys a couple of examples of what I've done just for our businesses. 
And I'm showing you this one. This is some air conditioning contractors that I started putting together for our stores. <coughs> That's what you did. You made money. And as you can see, a lot of these I don't, I wasn't able to find the name or the company or the position of the person, but you can see on the ones that I did. Um, on the ones that I wasn't able to find a contact person, that's where I have their phone number. I'm going to go ahead and call them and be like, hey, you know, this is Ilani with Power Wash Store Nashville. Um, we're new to your area, and I was just wondering if I get the name of your owner, I'd like to send him some information about our company. And then I'm going to go ahead and get his name and that kind of stuff. So it's not all just finding it online, and you know, there's still other steps that you you may have to do. Um, Are you making a list of ones that you want to find first, or a database that you're going to go through mm -hmm. each day? Um, to, not to really. Plan I it instead of just randomly. Yeah, no, like this one, um, I actually was given a list of from one of the other franchisees, and it was basically just all the different industries that we can sell to and stuff. And I just started at the top of the list, so air conditioning or you know repairs on top, so. Okay. So that, but here's one that I started working on for actual contractors for our show that's coming up. And as you can see, I was able to find more of the information. And I have their Facebooks on here, their websites, emails, their addresses, phone numbers, names, whether they're the owner of the company, president of the company, co-owner, um, principal on the, the company, that type of stuff. Um, Again, with all of these, I, you know, Googled what I wanted to find, pressure washers in Tennessee. It pulls up like 30 pages. <laughs> and I just start going through, click, 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 click. I find their websites. Um, and typically from their websites, it'll give me their Facebook, which a lot of times, like on websites and things like that, they might not include their email address on their website. Like you can't find it. They'll have that little contact us form, but that's it, but no email. But I can go onto the Facebook page, you know, click on it from their website, and it takes me to their business page, which, and then I click on the about on the business page. And guess what I have there? I might have the owner's name that wasn't on the website. I'm going to have his email address. I'm going to have, you know, whatever, like, extra information. Sometimes they don't even have an address on the website, but they have it on their Facebook. So you're going to be looking in multiple places if they have a little Yelp button on there and I need some information, I might click on that just to see if it's there. Again, they're better business pages, you know, able to find it, that type of stuff. So like I said, it's, it's a lot, but like I said, don't be intimidated by it, because once you start doing it, you know, you're just going to be like, okay, I mean, you're going to start flying through it. Anybody have any questions? I'm trying to get you guys out of here for lunch, so. <laughs> so do most of those CRMs that you listed up there mm -hmm. do you know, uh, multiple big from straight from the mm -hmm. marketing all of it from the same? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Is that the customer package? Is that you can use all, lots of them? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I just pulled package those ones on my head because I've I've worked Re repeat personally his with question because nobody else would have been able to hear what you just said. Right. Okay. Um. He was basically here. You want to? Well, I was just saying that the, uh, do those CRMs uh, do multiple things like bidding and marketing and all of the above within the program itself? Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, you want to load it somewhere that's going to be able to make use of that data yeah, and exactly. contact them and <clears throat> set up your emails, set up whatever communication that you want to do there. Yeah, and like I said, that's why I also start everything always in an Excel sheet. Because like I said, if I have uh, email marketing, like constant contacts or MailChimp, I can pull whatever columns I need yeah. and just upload it. Like I said, it takes 30 to 45 seconds, and I can get 250 email addresses of contacts into my MailChimp. You know, not one shot. Yeah, and then I'll set up the email that I want to send to all of them and be done. And I and with like MailChimp and constant contacts, you can actually break it down. So if you wanted to do, you know, market to all of your restaurants because you know the end of the quarter's coming up and they're going to have visits, you can put all your restaurants in one category and then market specifically those. If you want to do property management, keep all your property management in the folder and then, you know, towards the end of the year when they're going through budget season, you can shoot all those out. 
So I mean, it's just kind of an easier way. But yeah, I always start with the Excel just because you can pull it apart and do what you need to do without losing any of the data. And sometimes going from one CRM to another, you're not going to get all the data. Mm -hmm. She can put whatever she needs in there. Yeah, yep. that's where I'm at. Uh, now I've got to get into the system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I said, you don't even have to use a CRM, really. Right. I mean, right. if, if you know how to mail merge letters and, you know, that type of stuff, or if you're yeah. familiar with Microsoft Office, you don't even really need a CRM. You can just do it yourself and, you know, get it all done. Especially with, like I said, constant contacts, MailChimp, they're easy to set up marketing, you know, email databases. Um, and like I said, even, like I said, if you can do a mail merge and stuff like that, you can get all of that information really easy into whatever you need to do, whether it's print materials or electronic materials. One thing about that customer factor of QuickBooks, for the 40 or 50, for the 40 bucks a month, I, one of my guys on the field over the last year, I'm just saying that the back to your customer, and I'm like, I use a customer factor, and I'm like, where the lady's number, I text it to my secretary, the screenshot it. It is nice to have that stuff on the phone, on the fly, you know, you're stuck in an airport, or you're waiting for someone to come in and get a call, you know, what if you look up and you had to keep adding the information in, you know, or if you're thinking about someone, you know, it's nice to be able to have it at your disposal. Yeah, what, um, once they go from being a prospect to a customer, that's when you definitely need them in there. Well, but right yeah, now you have so much stuff there. And especially with the CRMs and stuff like that, because you can tag somebody as a prospect. And then once they become a customer, it's as easy as just clicking them over to your active customers. So that way you don't lose that information and it's already there. You know all the times that you've spoken with them before they became a customer. So you actually start building a history of that company and your interactions with that company. Um, well, what's the range on the monthly cost of these CRMs? It really, it really just depends on which one you go with. I know there's some as low as you know, you can do like fifteen dollars a month, and but I've seen them all the way up to a few hundred dollars you need to call a month. I want to demo. I want to demo, but I want full capabilities. Every single one of my partners is working. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times, if you contact them, like you said, they will give you you know a free trial period just to see how you like it and see if it's something that you want to use. Yeah, Steve is Dave Carroll with Proposal. He'll give you guys. There you go. Yeah, but, but Colin was getting back to about getting the information and stuff like that. I can actually upload all of this information into like Outlook, and then I can actually have Outlook on my phone and actually download all of my contacts into a separate like phone book onto my phone from there. So anything that I put into Outlook, I have right there at the top, you know, touch of a finger. So if I'm trying to find a customer, prospect, whatever, I can easily, you know, search their name or, you know, <coughs> if I know their customer number, I can search their customer number and then it just pops up all that information. I can email them from my phone. I can send them a fax from my phone. I mean, I can pretty much do anything I want from my phone. Send them a bid, whatever. I just like Excel, like I said, just because it's very simple and it's easy to pull apart. Um, and a lot of people grew up using it. You can work back to what you're saying, it's easy to access the client, you have Google connected to everything. Okay, I mean, if you have like a Google account, your Gmail account, and you add your contacts and stuff in, that's another way. I was well, just using can, the Outlook as an example. You can throw that into Google Sheets yeah, really easily. Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, anything like that that has like. Uh, <coughs> phone book, database that can connect to your phone. You can use any of those programs. You look at them, they're all pretty integrated now. Yeah, pretty much it clicks on, okay, so what do you want to add in here? I want the first name, last name. You know, I don't need their company position, but I want their company name, their address, email, you know, all of that. I can actually pick and choose which ones I want to put into that database, and it'll just automatically populate those fields, and it's good to go. Anybody else? Any more questions? No? None? Okay. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you for listening to each other on here. Um, <laughs> if you guys have any questions that you didn't want to ask in front of everybody, um, you can contact me on Facebook. Um, 
My name is under Leilani Chasner Page. Um, I'm very searchable. If not, you can also message the Power Wash Store Nashville um, business page and I can answer.